Hello and welcome to New Junction. Now a day I've been long avoiding is finally here. It's time to ballast the station area. Before we can get on with the ballasting however, there's a few housekeeping tasks that need to be done. Just small things but uh, they'll make all the difference when it comes to the actual ballasting. As you can see all my track has uh, cork underlay. Um, some bits are quite roughly done so here there's uh, quite an edge whereas a bit further down if we look it's all well trimmed. All I'm going to simply do now is go around with a, uh, a razor blade um, and just trim all the edges down so it's nice and neat. As with most of my layout I've used flexi track um, for all the straight pieces. Now when you come to the end of a piece of flexi track you have to usually have to cut it down to fit. Um, what that involves though is taking away some sleepers. Um, now before we can ballast and stick any glue down we've got to uh, find some spare sleepers, um, cut all the uh, protruding parts off them with a, again with a, a razor blade and then uh, slip them back in position like this one. Should just slide in. Keep make sure it's straight. And then once it's uh, ballasted over, you'd never know it was missing. But uh, I'm going to go do the rest of them now. The next job on the agenda is to uh, clean the track. So even though we're about to ballast and glue everything down, I just like to get all the uh, uh, grime on the top of the rails off before we stick some glue down. Just makes it easier to clean and doesn't uh, seal it in with any PVA later. As you can see there's, I don't know if you can, there's black spots just on my track and they uh, all need to come up ready for a, uh, a hoovering. So as you can see now, you can actually see underneath the rails here um, the amount of dirt that's actually accumulated since I've laid the track. But uh, that's all going to come up now with uh, Henry Hoover. Now that that's finished, we're going to move on to the ballast. Um, I always use Woodland Scenics um, for no other reason that just works for me. Um, I use the fine ballast, which is the intended for N gauge, but I just think it looks more realistic on double O. Um, the smaller the better. Um, as you can see, I've got the light grey on the left and the grey blend on the right. The grey blend is what I've used on the rest of the layout. Um, but uh, I fancy with the weathering of the station it's going to be much darker and I was going to try and weather it with washes rather than an airbrush or rather than uh, sort of painting. Um, so I wanted a lighter colour so that I could build it up darker in layers if that makes sense. So first things first we've got to mix those together equally so here's a pan I've stolen um, because I've got nothing better <laughs> and the pan's already up here. Um, so what I'm going to do is pour them in together and just give them a stir round. Now because the previous half of the layout was ballasted so long ago, I can't actually remember how far the ballast goes. So I'm not going to pour the whole two tubs into this pan. Um, I'm going to pour sort of half a tub of each and mix it together. So here goes. Feels like I'm on a uh, dodgy cooking programme. So that's roughly half the light grey and then here's the grey blend. I'm just going to pour roughly the same amount in. There we go. You can see that's roughly there um, and all I'm going to do now is with the back end of a brush just mix this in until it's one colour. And there we go. In the light you can see it makes quite an acceptable uh, tone of mixed grey. 
just a touch lighter. Um, but then comparing it to my ballast behind, um, you'd never really know. So now that's mixed together, we quite literally only need two things at this stage. The first one is my trusty ballast mate, um, which is what we fill up with the ballast and then quite simply drag along the track. Um, and then the second is once that's finished, we use a good trusty uh, stiff bristle brush just to get the, uh, the ballast in all the nooks and crannies. I almost forgot all the points um, and the mechanical section have been taped up. Um, of course at this stage we're only putting on the ballast dry so worst case if it gets into places it shouldn't do um, we can always just take it back up again. So uh, we're not quite uh, at the gluing phase yet but um, at this stage we're just taping them up. Now you've all seen me ballast before it's very very simple all we're going to do is take the, uh, the ballast mate place it on the uh, track where it'll go uh, bear in mind the platforms are here so it won't go the whole way around um, we fill up the ballast mate to one hopper full we literally tilt it up pull it around nice and slow but still at a steady speed just to get a nice covering and as you can see just like that we've ballasted what that leaves you with um, is track which is pretty much covered. Um, but what I do before I continue anymore is I just stiffle down with the brush the same direction the ballast mate went in and I go up the middle uh, first of all and then again on both sides pretty much tapping on top of the, uh, the head of the rail. Um, what this does, it doesn't clear it very well but it just uh, pushes the ballast into all those corners and the nooks and crannies um, which later probably would be an annoyance because they just rip up. So as you can see nice and easy, nice and quick. Once you've uh, brushed that in um, like that you can then sweep the excess ballast forward. Again this is only uh, loosely at this stage, there's no glue so if you get it wrong, you can just hoover it back up again. But you don't really get ballast wrong. It's not perfect in reality. Um, and there we are. So if I give you, take you in for a closer look, you can see just for that bit, um, we've got a nice shoulder of ballast, which will be flattened out because we're obviously on a at a platform. You don't really get shoulders, um, um, and uh, all the uh, the gaps and the corners and things. Um, are full of uh, ballast. Um, so we're just going to repeat this process now um, and uh, I'll see you when I've done this bit. Now you can see here that the ballast mate leaves shoulders which is great out in the open especially in the countryside or if a line's leaving the station but in the station you don't tend to get them particularly on uh, bigger stations. Um, so what I'm going to do um, is literally um, almost like the real thing, just tamper the ballast with the brush. And as you can see that flattens it out. It will take a couple of goes, um, but it's well worth taking your time over just to get that nice flat look. And when that settles, particularly when the uh, moisture's been on it, um, when we're ready to glue it, That'll dry nice and flat. Just trying to get rid of the uh, the ripple effect. Um, and as you can see, that uh, just looks much more realistic. Right, it's a day later, and I've got to a point now where I uh, feel I'm not going to get any uh, better with the larger brush. The ballast is as flat as I can get it, and is. Uh, uh, uniform to the eye as I think I'm gonna gonna do um, the next phase which is extremely painful <laughs> is uh, getting rid of all the small grains on the rail heads Ooh, sorry um, that you can see there um, now for such a small thing 
um, it doesn't half make a big difference um, to the de definition of the track. Um, so what I do is I take my smallest brush, like this one, and I literally now go over them all and just brush them all off. Um, and literally just go over all the track uh, and it makes it look ten times better. Um, some people do suggest tapping on the rails, which does work to a point, but what I tend to find is it the way it works is it vibrates the grains off the track, but the, the problem I tend to find is all the um, sleepers at the sides, it also vibrates the ballast away from them, so you can see the cork through it again. So unless you're going to rush into painting the track, um, I would say take the time now and use a small brush. Um, it doesn't take too long, it's just a, a tad repetitive, um, but it's well worth the difference. I'll show you when I've got a bit further on. So here's an example of the uh, small brush treatment. The top rail uh, has had it done and the bottom one obviously still hasn't had it done. Um, you don't quite realise how uh, um, much it affects the, the look until you clean one. Um, as I say, it's such a small thing, but uh, from a distance it just, just takes away something um, which just makes it look a bit more defined, a bit more realistic. So uh, I'm going to carry on now. Um, and uh, keep going before I give up. <laughs> right, so some time later, um, after slightly losing the will to live, <laughs> my uh, ballasting is now um, ready for gluing. So for the most part, um, all the little, little bits are now off the sleepers um, and it's looking very neat and tidy. In fact, this is probably the neatest it'll ever look because as soon as the uh, glue and water go on, um, it'll mess it up ever so slightly again, so um, um, I'm just sort of enjoying this for a bit. Um, I've only done halfway, so you see the halfway point in the board there? I've literally just gone a bit further than that, and uh, um, now it's ready for um, gluing. So before I can start with the uh, the ballasting, uh, the first trick um, is to wet the ballast. So what I'll be doing is using a, uh, a spray bowl, as you can see here. Um, it's not de-icer, it's got water in there. And I'll be uh, soaking the ballast. Now, because the um, station tops are a paper cover, I've actually covered them in cling film, very roughly. Um, and as I uh, go around wetting the ballast, um, I will be using a bit of cardboard as well, um, just to sort of try and catch any uh, stray spray. Um, before I actually apply the ballast, uh, the glue to the ballast, sorry. Um, of course, the uh, the sides of the platform, they've been uh, uh, covered in matte varnish, um, the two coats, so in theory, it shouldn't be affected when the actual glue and water mix goes on. So, first things first, we'll spray the ballast. Now, as I'm sure you've seen me do in the past, I'm going to make my um, glue mixture, just before I wet the ballast. Um, this is uh, almost a 50-50 split with PVA glue and water, um, probably 40-60 on the side of uh, glue, being the 40%, um, with a couple of drops of fairy liquid. Um, so in this instance I've got uh, some supermarket PVA glue um, and I'm literally going to uh, open the top and uh, if it will allow me, <clears throat> if I can do this live. Um, fill the bottom of this uh, jug up with a good dollop of uh, PVA glue. Ooh, don't want to use too much in one go. I can always make more. Um, probably about half of that. And then I've got a uh, tub of water here. Try not to get it everywhere. I just want to uh, uh, not quite double the volume at this stage. Because um, you want it nice and runny, um, and then of course a couple of drops of PVA, PVA glue, fairy liquid. All that does is once it settles on the ballast, it allows it to disperse. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is mix that in. That's going to take a few minutes, and once that's uh, mixed in. Um, 
to the correct consistency, I'm going to, uh, as I said, wet my ballast and start administering uh, the PVA. And all being well, um, in sort of 24 hours to 48 hours time, it should be dry and you should have a happy Richard. Um, worst case scenario is that the glue affects the uh, platform sides and top and the, the colour runs and spoils it. Now, that is something I'm genuinely concerned about. So, uh, <laughs> um, it's the first time I've used the paper tops, you see. So, plenty of people have done it, plenty of people have advised me. So, it'll be very interesting to see how, how it works out. Right, nearly there. I'm going to continue mixing this, and you'll be uh, joining me when I'm spraying my track. Right, so, here we're ready. So, first things first, I'm taking my uh, water spray. I'm, from a distance, I'm actually just going to uh, uh, mist spray my ballast. So you might see the droplets forming. The trick is not to hold back with the water. The ballast has to be wet. And as you'll probably see, a lot of bits are uh, probably jumping onto the uh, sleepers again. But that's completely normal and absolutely fine. be nice and wet. Don't worry about getting your uh, baseboard or the track wet or anything like that. Um, that's completely normal. Um, and then quite literally, if I show you my method, I syringe the uh, glue mix up. And the way I like to do it, streak down the middle with the a syringe full, and then down one side, then down the other. That should have soaked in by then. Um, and then you can see where the glue has or hasn't uh, got to. If the glue beads at all and runs down, just need a touch more washing up liquid. So, <laughs> all on camera, here we go. Let's let that out the uh, syringe. Again, not being scared to use um, uh, the, the PVA mix on the track at all. It's your best friend in this scenario. And it'll all come straight back up. Um, later on when you come to clean the track again before use trust me you want a nice uh, <laughs> a nice thick layer of glue on this uh, there's nothing worse than a bit further down the line and the ballast starting to come up so I don't know how well you can see this on camera um, what I found is uh, looking at it it's soaking into the middle very slowly uh, this side edge has gone right in but then it'll be soaking into the middle. Um, this outer side um, is definitely soaking in near the sleepers, but there's actually the top of the uh, the mound, which is going to need a, another another bead. So I'll be a bit slower just to make sure I get the uh, the top. On to the other side. So you can see how uh, how uh, wet it's getting. Um, so you can see why I'm ever so slightly nervous when it comes to being around the uh, paper platforms. Um, but uh, time will tell. Uh, don't forget, worst case, if parts of it don't dry because of, I suppose, uh, it's not spreading properly. Don't worry, because once uh, the glue's dried, I'll go over this with a hoover. Um, any parts that will are loose will come up. Fill them back in and do the same again. Nice and easy. There we go. And uh, any bits that aren't uh, looking mushy now need more glue. <laughs> And there we are. I'm now going to continue, um, and uh, you'll join me in a second when it's done. 
and just like that the glue is drying now we're probably about an hour since I uh, um, applied all the glue to this uh, area um, the bit I did on the camera is uh, there um, a few things uh, that are worth noting later on my little tub I started to get uh, glue sort of conjooling at the bottom and you can see all the sort of white dots um, nothing to worry about with those we'll just pick them off if they don't disappear um, it normally dries clear but uh, they'll just pick off no problem at all at the end um, I did catch the ballast down here as I was spraying I had a bit of cardboard um, which I was using to stop um, overspray um, and you see I caught that that's no bother we'll let it dry hoover it up scratch it out and fill it back in and go over it again um, now my biggest worry um, which is why I've come back up to check on the uh, station is that the uh, the paper tops with the with the water now the sides themselves are holding up very well with the um, matte varnish um, they're actually beading the liquid on the outside my worry of course is as the glue uh, seeps in and dries um, it's going to go underneath um, the edge and come up the inside and ruin the uh, um, the print that way um, looking at it now whether you can see it on camera the end of this platform is uh, seep soaking up the moisture so as it's drying it's drawing it up like a sponge um, and all these edges here I don't know if you can see them you might not be able to see that very well on camera it's actually sodden it's extremely damp it's just absorbed all the water so uh, fingers crossed um, after I took the cling film off earlier I did uh, dry up any beads of moisture that were on there but uh, the cling film worked extremely well but it's just soaking up the moisture now and I'm just a bit concerned about how it's going to end up by tomorrow hopefully the colours won't run too much but unfortunately that's going to be a bit of a waiting game so <laughs> dare I say it thank you for watching this is going to be a to be continued video take care now bye